How does pregnancy change your brain? That's what a neuroscientist from California wanted to know. So she became her own guinea pig, and the results are unprecedented. Before this new study, which was published in Nature Neuroscience, researchers could only estimate what a woman's brain goes through during pregnancy. Well, Dr. Liz Krastel is the cognitive neuroscientist at the heart of this new research, and she's joining us from Irvine this morning. Great to meet you. Good morning, Anne-Marie. Thanks for having me. First of all, what led you to want to be part of this study in the first place? Well, uh, we were working on a lot of different studies based on women's brain health, looking at things like menopause and um, uh, cognition that changes with, with that. Um, my collaborator, Emily Jacobs, and her graduate student, Laura Pritchard, who's the first author on this study, um, were working on a, on a menstrual cycle study. And during that time, I was planning a pregnancy. And so with all of this going on, I was like, hey, we, we need to do this. And then in order to do this, you had 26 MRI scans in total. That included 16 during your pregnancy. What was that experience like? Well, you know, this, this is one of those things that I am a neuroscientist, and so I do this pretty regularly, um, you know, myself, just to, to try things out when we do studies. And so, um, you know, I was used to doing, the, doing this work. And so in some ways, it took a neuroscientist to know what it was like to, to do this sort of work. Um, so, you know, I'm pretty comfortable in the scanner. Um, you know, I'm able to just like hang out. Obviously, it gets a little less comfortable as things go on during the pregnancy, um, but we made it um, as good as possible. So I want to ask you about this. So both your brain's white matter, which processes information, and then it connects part of the brain together. That changed. Can you walk us through, first of all, what we're going to show people and then what you learned? Sure. So we had sort of a couple main findings. So one thing that we found was the gray matter, which are the sort of cell bodies of your neurons and sort of the things that you think about when you think about your brain, um, is it, it got reduced in volume by about 4% on, on average. Um, some got some were more or some were less, but, um, but overall we had a reduction of about 4%. That's what you're seeing here. Um, on the other hand, um, we have the white matter, which are the connections between brain areas. And they go sort of these big, long tracks that connect between areas. These are the axons of the neurons, if you're interested. Um, and they are sort of the, the ways that areas are connected to each other. And um, it's sort of like a road, and you want it to be well paved. And what we found was the, the paving of the road, the quality of those connections, tended to actually improve during the, during the course of pregnancy. And they peaked around the second trimester and then went back down to baseline. So we would have missed that if we had just done a pre and post um, design. If we just looked before and after, we would have missed all that stuff in the middle because it, it looked the same by the time we were done. You entered this study because you were curious and had questions. So what did you learn? Yeah, so, you know, overall, we really find this this really incredible change that's going on <clears throat> during pregnancy. And, um, you know, we, we think it's it's a good thing. We, we don't think necessarily that, you know, because there's a reduction in brain volume that it's necessarily bad or, or it's harmful. Um, but in fact, uh, your brain undergoes these kind of changes all the time when you're you're doing different things. So during puberty and adolescence, we also see a reduction in, in, in brain volume and other things and sort of pruning. So we think this is sort of a natural change. We don't necessarily know what it means in terms of um, <clears throat> whether it's, you know, what specifically it's going to be useful for. We do think that's a sort of, you know, a, a fine-tuned uh, thing that people have been having children for, you know, millennia. But, um, but that, um, so we don't, specifically we don't know, we'll find out more as we continue, but um, we do think it's going to be adaptive in some way. Um, what I w I'm curious to know then, Liz, is so all three of us who host the show, we are all moms. We are all taught sharing our experiences of like baby brain. So does what you learned in those images you show us, is that what baby brain looks like? Well, we're not sure exactly. So, so I actually personally didn't particularly experience any baby brain or mommy brain during pregnancy. Certainly afterwards, when my, my son was born, I, you know, you're not sleeping. There's all kinds of things going on too. So it's hard to attribute it, right, to one thing or another, um, whether it's the lack of sleep, the stress, all these other things that are going on. Um, but it, what it certainly means is that there are going to be changes. And, and that's a question that we're looking forward to, to next is sort of seeing, does it tie to like memory issues or anything like that? And then do some people experience this more or others, right? So again, I didn't have particular experience when I was pregnant, but lots of people do. And so it's a question of, of, you know, does it, is it meaningful in some way? Like if you have a worse experience or better experience with your, with your sort of mommy brain, does that, um, mean anything. And so like, for example, postpartum depression is a big question that we're wondering about or peripartum depression. So if people are more susceptible to postpartum depression, um, because of these changes, that's something we want to look forward to next. 
Listen, on behalf of moms everywhere, thank you for making yourselves a guinea pig and for giving us a little bit more information. You know, women's health doesn't have a lot of research. We appreciate you putting yourself in the foreground. Absolutely. It's way understudied. We're just scratching the surface. This study opens way more questions than it answers, and we're looking forward to more work in the future. Great to meet you this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.